Hello, and welcome to Modding Torchlight 2 with Blender 3D. I am putting together this short tutorial series to help people create or edit 3D models using Blender 3D for use in mods for the Torchlight 2 game. While the focus is on modding Torchlight 2, most of the techniques shown can be applied to modding other games or even creating your own games using other game engines like Unity 3D or Unreal Engine. You do not need to be an expert in Blender to follow this tutorial. However, you should at least have a working knowledge of the interface. If you are new to Blender, I recommend checking out the tutorials on cgcookie.com and blenderguru.com. In addition, I recommend checking out blendernation.com. The website is constantly updated with links to new and interesting tutorials. For the purposes of this tutorial, I will be using Blender 3D version 2.79b. If you are using an older version of Blender, please update to 2.79b by downloading it from blender.org. I know that version 2.8 is an alpha, but I'm fully expecting that none of these plugins I'm about to show you will work in version 2.8. You will, of course, need Torchlight 2 and the Torchlight 2 Guts Editor installed. Torchlight 2 uses the Ogre game engine. So all of the 3D models it uses are in the Ogre format. In order to use any of the plugins shown in this tutorial, you will need the Ogre command line tools. These tools are used by all the Blender plugins used to import and export Torchlight 2 models. It is important to use version 1.72 for Torchlight 2. If you are modding a different game, you will need to use the appropriate version of the command line tools. Version 1.7.2 is this blue link here, not the green button. You do not want the one with the green button. Once downloaded, extract the tools to your hard drive. Generally, this is C colon Ogre command line tools on a Windows machine. Many plugins will look for them there by default, but you can put them anywhere that will be accessible while you are modding, as long as you remember the path. You will need to set the path and the plugins correctly in order for them to work. Here's a helpful tip. By default, the tool ogreXMLConverter.exe adds some things to the binary 3D models that are not used by the Torchlight 2 game. This has the side effect of making the models much larger than they need to be. What I did was to create a shortcut to the converter that has the dash E option on it to remove the automatic generation of edge lists. You can do that by right clicking on the EXE, clicking create shortcut. It created a second one here because I already had it. Click on the properties for that shortcut and then just add a dash E to the end of it and hit OK. Now when you drag and drop your XML files that are generated over top of this converter, it'll make them without edge lists and it'll result in a smaller file. Another thing you're going to want to have is a good text editor. Personally, I use VS Code. It's very powerful and it's free. Another option many monitors are using is Notepad++. There are plugins available for these text editors that have syntax highlighting for Ogre 3D material files. The first plugin we want to grab is this Ogre Cave Blender to Ogre plugin. This plugin is really advanced and it has a lot of features. I haven't really explored everything in it. This is the primary plugin I have been using to export 3D objects and animations. Unfortunately, there are some things this exporter does that aren't quite in line with what Torchlight 2 expects, mostly material names and shared vertices. I often have to tweak the files that are generated afterwards and then run the XML files that are generated through the converter that we had just downloaded previously. To get this plugin, you want to Click this clone or download, download the zip, save it, and once you extract it, 
The one only thing you're really interested in in that zip is going to be this IO Ogre folder. The next plugin we want to get is the Blender Add-on Torchlight 2 by Pink Vertex. This plugin is specific to Torchlight 2. It also works with the original Torchlight. With this plugin, you can load all the models from the game. Level pieces, weapons, armor, NPCs, player characters. All of it. This is really important so you can see how the different 3D assets are put together and how things should be named. Not to mention getting the animations into Blender. For many years we were not able to get the animations into Blender, so we had no way of editing them or previewing them. If you wanted to change animations, you basically had to make new ones from scratch. Even if you never edit the animations, being able to create a new armor piece and see how it works on the character in motion without having to constantly export it and load it in the game saves an incredible amount of time. Again, for this plugin, we're going to click the clone or download button and download it as zip. Now in this case, the plugin is set up in a folder structure where we can just directly import it via Blender as a zip file. And we'll do that in the next steps. One thing you may want to do before trying to import this plugin is to right click on it, come down to properties, and unblock it. This way, you know, Windows isn't trying to block it. So I've started up Blender 2.79b. And I've cleaned this out so that I have no plugins installed, configured, running. This way, we can go through the process of setting up these plugins, and my configuration should match yours. To get started, we're going to come up here. We're going to come down to User Preferences. We're going to switch over to the Add ons tab. And then down here, we have Install Add-on from File. Click this. We're going to go to the Downloads folder where we downloaded those plugins. We're going to select our uh, Blender Add-on Torchlight 2. And we're going to Install Add-on from File. Now you see it shows up here. Go ahead and click the checkbox to turn it on. Click the down arrow. And we have some things down here that we need to configure. First, we're going to set up the Torchlight 2 media directory. Uh, if you haven't already, you will need to run the Torchlight 2 guts and extract all the media files. There's other tutorials out there on how to do that, so I'm not going to show it here. But you will need to know where that folder is in order to do this. Here is my media folder. I want to accept that, and it'll be in this media directory. Next, we need to set up where the XML converter is. This is part of those Ogre tools that we downloaded earlier. Now you saw mine was on my E drive. I didn't put it in the default location. As long as I set up my path correctly, it'll work fine. You will actually want to select the EXE here. Otherwise, you will get a message about permissions denied. 
looks something like this. It's not a very helpful error. But yeah, if you, if you get this message, then essentially that means you didn't select the exe at this step. Output directory. You're going to need to set up a special folder where the mesh files from Torchlight are converted to XML for loading into and out of Blender. These XML files will be overwritten constantly. So what I did was inside my Ogre command line tools folder, I just created an XML folder. And so I set my, my folder to this. I'm not going to mess with the command line arguments at this time. As long as the dash E is in there, we won't be generating edge lists and that should keep our mesh files smaller. Once you are done with that, save your user settings so that the plugin will be enabled the next time you load Blender. While we're here, another good plugin to have is one called Loop Tools. This plugin is very handy for just doing things with uh, your meshes. If you're going to be doing a lot of editing of mesh files to create new armors, you're going to be working with loops a lot. If you're not familiar with the loop terminology, uh, it's part of topology with 3D models. And it's pretty important. Now that we have the Blender to Ogre Master extracted, to make this easier to install, you just want to right click on the IO Ogre folder, come down to Send to, Compressed Zip folder, save that. Now you can go back to Blender, go into your user preferences like we did before, and then down to install add-on from file again. Go into that Blender to Ogre Master, find that IO Ogre we just created, and install add-on from file. Now we have it up here, we can enable it. And just like before, we have some options we need to configure. Some of these we're not going to use. Others, you know, this is a command line tools. We need to set that up. Make sure you're setting these top two options to their appropriate EXE under the Ogre command line tools directory. In my case, I also have the Ogre Meshi tool, so I have set that up as well. There is another plugin I wanted to talk about briefly, and this is the uh, Torchlight to Blender that was originally created by Dusho. This was made for Torchlight 1, and it originally was for a, I think it was version 2.49 of Blender. Um, it's pretty old. This one has been slightly updated uh, by me, actually. I added a couple of features that were asked for. The you know, Torchlight series modders have used this for years. I haven't been using this anymore since I started using the other two plugins, but quite a few modders still use this. This one's big problem is the bones for animated models. It just does weird things to them so that when you export, you never want to use the skeleton file generated from this plugin. If you do, it tends to kind of look like somebody had a bad transporter accident on Star Trek. Another tool you may want to have is Ogre Meshy. This is useful for previewing your meshes after you've exported them, but before you've actually put them inside Torchlight for a mod. You can actually see animations and the shading, the bones, make sure everything lines up and looks right before importing it. If you do download this tool, you can add it to the configuration for the Ogre Cave Blender to Ogre plugin. 
This concludes the setup of the Blender plugins and required tools to be able to create and modify 3D assets for Torchlight 2. In the next tutorial, we will get started using these plugins. There are two websites I wanted to point out that if you get stuck and need help with your mods that you can go here. The first is Torch Modders. The forum and the wiki are great sources of information. They also have a Discord and someone is on it nearly 24-7. The other website is the Torchlight fan site. This one has been around a very long time. There's a lot of information in the forums.